All right, thanks for joining me again. Uh, it's been a while since I made a video and I've um, been working on a few different projects. We're getting ready to kind of expand um, what we're growing. So um, this is pretty exciting what I have behind me, actually a boiler that was kind of inspired from uh, the Let's Grow Mushroom site. I believe it's Mark Keith who's got a series of videos out there. I'm sure uh, if you've done any sort of looking into mushrooms, you've probably come across this information. So um, one of the things he had done was create his own 55-gallon uh, uh, drum boiler. Um, and uh, basically a low-pressure sterilization system. So I took a little inspiration from that and then uh, created what I have behind me. So I just wanted to kind of um, run down and give you guys an idea of uh, what I've done um, to use a few barrels I picked up, some black pipe, and um, kind of a system for doing some different types of so uh, substrate, such as sawdust. Um, you've probably seen uh, other videos that we've been doing straw for oyster mushrooms, and of course that's good for oysters, but um, really limited to the other um, uh, types of mushrooms that we want to grow and so we're getting ready to move into um, start growing some reishi, maitake as well as shiitake so um, kind of exciting for us and then of course what we need is a way to uh, pasteurize or, or sterilize in this case the substrates that we want to work with so um, let me kind of give you a rundown of what I have behind me here so um, I was able to pick up three 55 gallon drums um, about 10 bucks a piece, threw an ad on Craigslist and was able to uh, um, actually pretty quickly uh, find what I needed. And so what I had gone after was uh, definitely lidded barrels. I think that's kind of a key component of this because you need to be able to open it up and uh, actually load them from the front. So uh, since I ended up getting three and I needed some sort of shelving or racking, um, a friend of mine had suggested, well, you can go and get this uh, shelving unit that's actually a four foot section. And uh, you know, I sell the uprights. I didn't have to do any welding or anything like that. I um, was able just to put the beams on there and um, created a nice rack. And then it was a matter of once I got these barrels on top, I realized that wow, you know, I had three barrels, two fit perfectly. And um, thought, well, hey, you know, two is better than one, right? So um, was able to put them side by side and then come up with a design. Sitting down with an engineering friend of mine and. Uh, kind of uh, design a system that was going to do what we needed to do. And so there's some safeties that are in place as far as making sure that these don't get over pressurized and explode. And I'll show you all how this works as we kind of go here. And so um, just a high level of what this is really trying to do is um, towards the bottom we have a single barrel that is uh, essentially the boiler. And this is where all the work's done. So what we're going for is uh, steam. And then that steam is then traveling through this larger one inch pipe all the way up through the top and uh, going into these two top chamber barrels. And so then what we have there then, you know, steam comes up from the boiler, goes through here and then heats up this chamber. And then as this condenses, uh, there's a condensing run here, which I used half inch towards the back so this would be tilted so any condensate that is created inside the chamber will then go through and then back down and then if you kind of look there's a kink uh, right here that allows for water trap so what this is doing is this is staying mostly filled with water um, as the condensate returns this also happens to be where I'm uh, charging the line and actually putting water in um, didn't really have a need for I guess sealing this off quite yet and I'd rather this be the easy way of getting water into the boiler as I need to feed a little bit um, all day long. The goal behind this is to, to have a low pressure sterilization for anywhere from 8 to 10 hours. So you're not doing a high pressure sterilization like you would with a pressure cooker. You're actually doing it at a lower temperature just for much longer. So that's what we have there. So you can kind of see I have a ball valve here, water can come in, I can load it here and then once this is shut off this becomes the trap where the condensate will return down here and then as it uh, as more comes in it just slowly trickles back in so what I'm trying to do is capture as much of the the heat and energy that we're creating in the boiler I want to keep that in the system and then have as little um, going out as possible it's just going to make it more efficient overall so then the other advantage of having this trap here is then that also forces the steam to travel through the one inch pipe of course it's sort of like the path of least resistance since there is some water here the steam can't travel through this um, unless there was some sort of blockage, but then it takes this one inch pipe which allows it to freely flow and then um, go up into the chambers. And then I also have a, a dial gauge here that shows um, uh, for about 20 bucks you can get these. You can get uh, 
This goes all the way up to 250 degrees, which would be about 15 PSI, but of course we're not going to be going that high. And then this does go all the way to 75 PSI, which um, won't even be going close to that. What this has built in, which I'll show you on the side here, is um, a water column that's going to keep this safely at 2 PSI. Um, so the goal is I don't want this to go over that. So I'm just going to go ahead and move the camera a little bit here to show you guys another piece of this. If we look up here, I have some uh, shutoffs that one inch pipe coming out and it's just a half inch ball valve on top. And so the goal is fire up the entire system, allow it to free flow all the way through the chamber. And then what I can do is just open this in the air, allow it to vent. When I start seeing steam come out, I can actually just shut this off. And now I'm putting the entire system under pressure and capturing all that steam back in. And then what you have here is a... Uh, 56 inch water column. So um, what you have when you have uh, essentially pressure building up for every 20, roughly 28 inches, um, you can get one PSI. And of course that's gonna allow our temperature to raise slightly above 212 once we get boiling and get that steam going through. So the goal is to have this water column here, which is acting as a safety, but also helping us maintain that two PSI. So this is measured about 56 inches and then as the steam travels through, this is a closed loop system. Uh, what it's doing is, is it has kind of a one-way check valve here that's allowing steam to pass out. And then this is just gonna go all the way down to the bottom. And then that pressure of this uh, PVC tube, this is three inch PVC, um, the pressure from that water being inside of this is creating the, um, essentially what the water column is. So it's giving us that two PSI of pressure or allowing us to get to that um, inside the hole the whole deal so that's kind of it in a nutshell and on the front was where we actually load everything I have down here you can see um, a sight glass and so uh, I looked about trying to get maybe some sort of water feeder those types of things um, that was also suggested and uh, just decided I wasn't ready to make the investment they, you can get them for about 500 bucks and um, I was thinking, well, I want to try and capture as much as is possible in a lower cost solution for me. You can get these from Granger. They're about 75 bucks, um, probably about 80, 85 with shipping. And it's really just a sight glass. What it allows me to do is see how much water's in there. So as you fill up the water, your valves are open. This is all sealed. These are rated to, I think, go up to 300 PSI. There's different types of them. Um, but this really just allows me to see that, okay, hey, you know, there's uh, six inches of water in there, whatever I want to work with. And so I can come out here and manually look at this every you know hour or two to see, okay, do I have enough water? Do I need to feed a little water back in? And so that's the goal behind that. This gives you a inside view of what's happening as far as your water level. Cause of course you run out of water, heat being uh, on that metal. And if you've ever run a pan out of water, you can destroy the pan and actually, you know, at some point start that metal on fire. Uh, if it gets too hot. So we want to avoid that and having a sight glass, like I said, gets us in there uh, able to see it. So overall, a pretty simple system. Um, there's the front of the uh, barrels where you're actually going to load and uh, just pop these off. You just like a little swing, swing clamp. These come out. You just pull your front off. And there you go. And so you can see mine isn't quite level yet because I've been testing and actually just finished uh, building this and um, yeah so you load your stuff I still have a little work to do as far as getting some shelving put in here um, so that way I can load it efficiently and kind of maximize the space without stacking stuff on top of uh, one another so overall it's a pretty simple system I and mean, again the goal is just to boil steam from the bottom have the steam go up and uh, get trapped in there and keep that stuff pretty hot um, so we can sterilize it and then we can take that and inoculate it when we're ready so overall, I'd say there might be hmm, $30 in the barrels, um, probably about $150 in black pipe of the half inch and um, the, uh, the one inch piping. The sight glass is about 80. Um, the racking was probably the more expensive piece of this, probably about half the cost. And you could, of course, if you have steel laying around, um, you have different ways of doing things or something else you wanna use. Um, that was about 150 for me. And uh, yeah, so I'd say it's all under $500.
uh, to be able to do this project and then of course you're getting about 100 uh, gallons of capacity uh, actually well about 110 uh, total if you were to fill that thing chock full which of course wouldn't be necessary but um, really the only last steps and one of the reasons I want to kind of do a video now is I'm getting ready to insulate this because of course we just don't want it to open air we want to keep as much of that heat inside as possible so I'm going to go ahead and um, use some leftover uh, cotton batting um, essentially the same thing as fiberglass insulation they happen to make this out of denim uh, a little bit more expensive but I feel better if I'm breathing this stuff you know I'm still wearing a dust mask but I just feel better more environmental if you're into that sort of thing and then also I have some um, foil lined uh, it's kind of like bubble wrap but it's uh, meant for um, containing heat and I'll be using that to uh, kind of keep all the the soft batting inside and then course you know you're going to want to make sure that you don't get any water uh, if you do use some sort of batting like that or you choose to do a project like this and then uh, hopefully it looks a little nicer actually getting it wrapped with the uh the silver so i may show that yet uh, as i work on this and just to kind of give you an idea of what it totally looks like once you get it all insulated and uh and done so